Today we're going to look at a nice integral that I found on the Math Stack Exchange and I took inspiration from the solution from that post as well. Here you can check it out via this number. So let's take the integral from 0 to infinity of the natural log of x squared plus 2k times sine b times x plus k squared over x squared plus 2k times sine a times x plus k squared and then we've got this dx over x outside of the natural log. And I'd like to point out here that a and b have to come from negative pi over 2 to pi over 2 from that open interval. And in fact, outside of that open interval, you'll see that mistakes occur. And we'll point out where we use the fact that a and b are coming from that interval. Um, okay. So the first thing that I'm going to do is, well, observe that these things in the natural log look pretty similar in the numerator and the denominator. And furthermore, they're quadratics that look like their square could be completed pretty easily. And so that's, in fact, what we're going to do. So let's do that right here. So let's just copy this over, x squared plus 2k times sine of theta times x plus k squared. But I'm going to take that k squared and multiply it by 1 in the version of sine squared theta plus cosine squared theta. Okay, nice. And now from here, we're going to take this and group it a little bit. So we've got x squared plus 2k, then we have sine theta times x plus k squared times sine squared theta, and then plus k squared times cosine squared theta. And observe that this first bit is, well, it's a binomial that has been expanded. In fact, this first bit is equal to x plus k times sine of theta all squared. And so you can see that, oh, we get the x squared term here, we get the k squared sine squared term here, and we get twice the cross term there. And then here we have plus this cos squared times k squared. Okay, so let's keep that in mind, and we're going to rewrite the numerator and the denominator here using this completion of the square. But then at the same time, we'll also use our standard natural logarithm rule that says the log of a over b is the log of a minus the log of b. So we'll simultaneously do that. Okay, so that's going to leave us with the integral from 0 to infinity. I'm maybe going to take this 1 over x out front. And then we'll have the log of, well, it's going to be x plus k times sine of b um, all squared plus k squared times cosine of b, which has also been squared. Okay, so that's taking that numerator there. So that's like playing the role of capital A down there. And then we have this is minus, so it's going to be the natural log of, so we have x plus k sine of a squared plus k squared cosine squared of a, and then this is dx. Okay, so now that's looking pretty good. But now look at this. We've got natural log of something minus natural log of something else where the only thing that's changing is what's going inside of those trig functions. So to me, that looks like evaluation of an integral. And we can maybe rewrite it once just to see that more clearly. And we can do a quick rewriting to see that more clearly. So the integral from 0 to infinity, 1 over x, and then we'll have the natural log of x plus k times sine of theta squared plus k squared times cosine squared of theta. And now that's being evaluated from theta equals a to theta equals b dx. Okay, nice. But now what we'll do is apply the fundamental theorem of calculus. So I like to think of this object, this evaluation object, as a zeroth integral. And I can transform it to a first integral by, well, taking the derivative and then putting an integral in there. So let's do that. 
So we'll still have this integral from zero to infinity. We'll still have this one over x. And now I need to take the derivative of this object. Let's see, it's going to be with respect to theta. But this looks a little bit gnarly. So what I'm gonna do here is, well, rewrite it in this form just for a second. So let's recall that this is x squared plus 2k times sine of theta times x plus k squared. And I'm doing that so that I can appropriately use the chain rule. It's easier to take the derivative of this yellow term than it is, well, what we have when the square has been completed, even though they are the same. Okay. So let's get to it. So taking the derivative of the natural log, that'll put something in the denominator. It'll put the argument in the denominator. So we've got x plus k times sine of theta all squared plus k squared times cosine squared of theta. And then in the numerator, we've got the derivative of that argument, but that's with respect to theta, leaving us with 2k times x times cosine of theta and now we have d theta dx, so something like that. Okay, so now let's see what sort of simplification can occur. This one over x here can cancel with this x here, and that's good, and well, I forgot my integral here from a to b, bringing it down. Okay, so next up, I'm gonna factor a k squared cosine squared out of the denominator, and I'm gonna put each one of those copies of k cosine theta in two different places. So while we're at it, we'll take this two out front, integral from zero to infinity, integral from a to b, and then we'll have k cosine theta over k cosine theta, and then we'll have one over x plus k sine theta over cosine theta all squared plus one, and then we've got d theta over k cosine theta theta dx. So observe that I factored this k squared cosine squared theta out of the denominator. One of the k cosines went here. One of the k cosines went here. And of course, since this x plus k sine theta all squared didn't contain a k cosine theta term, that's why that became squared inside of the square term. So now from here, what we'll do is change the order of integration. And let's start a new board with that order of integration change. Okay, there's where we ended up on the last board. And now we're ready to make a substitution. And this substitution will almost take us all the way to the end. So let's take y and set it equal to x plus k times sine of theta over k times cosine of theta. And that means that dy is equal to dx over k times cosine of theta. So our change of variables for, is for the inner integral. Now let's see what happens to the bounds of integration here. So if x is equal to zero, observe that that's gonna make y equal to k sine theta over k cosine theta. In other words, it's gonna be equal to the tangent of theta. And then as x approaches infinity, well, y is also going to approach infinity. So that allows us to completely change our x integral into a y integral. And then furthermore, we've got some stuff that simplifies here. So observe that that just disappears. And then this becomes our dy term. Okay, so let's write it out. So we have two integral from a to b, integral from tangent theta up to infinity of dy over y squared plus one, and then we have d theta. But now, well, we can take that inner integral pretty easily, so let's do that. That's gonna be the arctan of y evaluated from the tangent of theta up to infinity d theta. Now, as the argument of the inverse tangent approaches infinity, the inverse tangent itself approaches pi over two. That's a well-known limit. And then the arctan of the tangent of theta, well, that's simply equal to theta, but that's only if 
the input is between negative pi over two and pi over two because you have these branchings of, of the inverse function with respect to the function itself. But that's why we had A and B in that range. So we can just simply use the fact that arctangent of tangent is theta. Okay, so we'll have two integral from A to B of pi over two minus theta d theta. Okay, well, that's gonna be equal to the integral from A to B of pi minus two theta d theta, which will end up giving us pi times B minus A, and then minus, well, it's gonna be theta squared evaluated at B and theta squared evaluated at A. So in the end, that's gonna give us plus A squared minus B squared. And that's our final answer. And that's a good place to stop.